I want to talk to you today about the sin of blaspheming the Word of God or causing the Word of God to be blasphemed. We're going to go first to Titus chapter 2 verse 5. Now Titus chapter 2 is instruction for godly women, the older woman, women, how they should instruct the younger women. And it says in verse 5, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands. Now look at this, that the word of God be not blasphemed. You know, a bad wife in the eyes of the world, when they see a woman that's rotten and they're professing Christians, you know what happens? Those lost people will mock this book. The word of God will be blasphemed. They'll laugh about it. They'll mock the Bible. And it's a sin. Okay? Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 1. We're going to see something similar here. It says, Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and His doctrine be not blasphemed. Okay? All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Okay? This is where you get doctrine, the Word of God. Now, what happens when you are a poor worker as a Christian? Your boss, your master there, okay, they'll make fun of this book. They'll mock it. They'll laugh about it. And there's another way here in the modern world that this book is now being blasphemed, that this book is now being mocked by the lost world. And the cause of it is over here. The New Alexandrian Versions. You say, oh, now, come on now. That's ridiculous. This is a ridiculous argument. No, it isn't. And I'm going to show you that, that this philosophy here, the lost world is now picking up on it, and they're using it to blaspheme this book, the Word of God. This isn't the Word of God over here. These are counterfeit, satanic counterfeits, which, you know, I'm going to prove as, as we go through this thing. But I just want to say one thing here. One of the lies that's going to be said about this video here, about my video, about what I'm saying is people are going to say that I'm accusing those who defend the new versions of committing the unpardonable sin. That's not at all what I'm saying with this video. Okay, the unpardonable sin is only possible to commit when Jesus Christ is physically present on the earth. That's why he said it won't be forgiven in this world where he was or in the world to come, the millennial kingdom. Okay. I did a sermon on that recently at our house church. Go to Sermon Audio. I'll put the link down there. Uh, go to Sermon Audio. Listen to the unpardonable sin message if you don't know what an un the unpardonable sin is. Okay, This is not the same thing. All right, There are a lot of people who ignorantly attack the King James Bible because they parrot the lies that were taught to them at their seminary. Okay, Now, they haven't committed the unpardonable sin. You can repent of that. And I have known many... Christians that, you know, men especially, they go through to be trained as preachers and they come out and they mock this book like crazy until somebody sets them straight. And then they repent of it and they end up standing up for the King James Bible uh, after blaspheming it, causing it to be blasphemed. Okay, so it's not the unpardonable sin. Don't lie about it. All right, I'm not accusing new version people of committing the unpardonable sin. And if you say that, you're a liar. Okay. Plain and simple. But you can blaspheme this book and cause it to be blasphemed by your attacks against the King James Bible. All right. Now let me just show you the importance of this. All right. Now let's take a look at 1 John chapter 5, verses 10 through 13. Some of the most important scriptures in the New Testament in terms of knowing that you are saved. Let's read. It says here, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. So what is this record? Okay, is it something that you feel? Is it some kind of a special burning in the bosom, you know, as the Mormons teach? What is the record that you are saved? Verse 13, 
These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Now you see, the way a Christian can prove that they are saved, and the way a Christian can lead others to Jesus Christ, is not by feelings. It's not by oral tradition. It's by written scripture. And there is no set of holy scriptures, holy writings, anything. There's no other ancient book out there that even comes close to the Bible in terms of ancient manuscripts and work that has been done for thousands of years to preserve this book. No other scriptures can claim the ancient history that the King James Bible does. Okay, And we have ancient witnesses, thousands and thousands and thousands of manuscripts, which by the way, the New Testament manuscripts, over 95% line up with this King James Bible. Okay, I have that in other videos. But my point is, this right here is your written record of how you are saved. Somebody says, I need proof that you're saved. Right there. Open it up and you can show them. How, that you, how I know I'm saved, and how that they can know that they are saved. And let me just show you something else to kind of illustrate this point. Right here is the title to my pickup truck. Now let's say I'm driving down the road sometime, and I get pulled over by a police officer for some reason, and he says, uh, license, license and registration, please. Oh, I don't have that. Well, is this your truck? Well, I think so. I feel it is. Uh, well, do you have an owner's card, uh, registration? Do you, I mean, do you have a title? Well, no, no, I don't, I don't have a title. And the, and the police officer says, well, then how do you know that this is your truck? Well, I feel good about it. I feel it's my truck. Uh, guess where I'm going to be going? I'm going to get to see the inside of a police station and probably even the inside of a jail. <laughs> you know, yeah. That's the way it is, okay? This is a legally binding document. This is proof right here that I own my pickup truck, all right? Proof, written proof. Now, who came up with this system? God did. Written proof right here. The greatest book of all time. And I don't mean the Bible as a generic term for any of 200 different versions. I mean the King James Bible is the greatest book ever. Okay, that is a scientifically provable fact. It is the greatest book. It has been printed more than any book in history. It has been distributed more than any book in history. I mean, how many books retain their popularity after 400 years? Okay, we're almost at 400 years with this King James Bible and it's still one of the most popular best-selling books on the market. Okay? It's not an, it just, a, just another book. All right? It's, it's just ridiculous, these people that come up with these attacks on the King James Bible. But uh, I want to show you some video clips here in this study. I want to show you some things here where the lost world is mocking this book. They're blaspheming the Word of God because of all these ridiculous new versions. I'm going to prove it to you in this video, and I'm going to actually show you that it's a lot worse than most people realize. So let's start out here. This is an, this is an older debate between Dr. Ken Hoven and uh, Dr. Uh, Pigliucci, I guess his name is, an Italian evolutionist. Um, I'll refrain myself from giving you my opinion of the man. But uh, listen to what Dr. Pigliucci says in this debate about the Bible. The Bible has lots of scientific statements. It's not a science book, but when it deals with science, it's right. Which version of it? Of course. Which version of it? Which version of it? Which version of it? Hmm, isn't that interesting? Oh, the Bible says this. Which one? You see, it is a rather ridiculous religion that has, I don't even know the, the, the number right now, I, I've lost track, 
over a hundred versions of their holy book and they all contradict one another. I mean, that, if that's true, that they're all editions of God's holy word, then we have a very confused God, okay? But let me just show you the street application of this, okay? We saw it there among the lost world of evolutionists that they're teaching their students. They, they laugh at this book because of the multiple new versions that have come out to make this, look, this book look bad. But let's go to the street now. We're going to see some street ministry, and we're going to see this thing. So check this video clip out. Uh, where, where in the Bible says, can you find uh, in the Bible where it says, uh, G when Jesus says, I am God, worship me? Well, in the Bible, when people... I'll give you $100 in any Bible, there's 80 of them. If you find me... Okay. There's 80 Bibles, but there's only one. one if he, Allah isn't like that either. Why, why is there more yeah. than one Bible? Allah isn't like that either. Why, why is there more yeah. than one Bible? Allah isn't like that either. Why, why is there more yeah. than one Bible? Allah isn't like that either. Why, why is there more yeah. than one Bible? Which one of the 80 versions is God's Word? That's a good question, actually. Very good question. Now, how can you answer him if you are for the new versions? How do you answer a man like that, a young man like that that's, that's making an attack, that's blaspheming the Word of God, that's mocking this book right here? How do you answer him? Well, now, see, if it was me that was asked that question, I can answer him no problem. I'll say, well, this one right here, the King James Bible is God's perfect word for the English-speaking people. All the others are counterfeits, okay? Satan came in and he made all these other versions as counterfeits of the one true Bible. And by the way, read the preface in all the new versions. They all attack this book. Okay? Yes, there is a satanic conspiracy against the King James Bible. It's been proven over and over and over again. And we're just going to keep proving it until the Lord takes us out of here. So, that's the way it's going to be. But now, if you're for these new versions, how can you answer a young Muslim? that comes to you and says, which of the 80 versions is God's Word? Well, you're forced to do one of two things. Number one, you can lie to him and you can say, all the Bibles say the same thing. All the translations, all of these 80 plus, over 100 actually, all of them say the same thing. Now, a lost person can pick that apart like that. All right, They don't say the same thing. That's a lie. A total lie. And that's what most modern Christians will say to the lost world when they are asked this question. That all the new versions say the same thing. No, they don't. No, they do not. Okay? They're not even from the same Greek text. Not even from the same part of the world. This over here is from Egypt. This is from Antioch. This has over 95% of Greek extant Greek manuscripts support this text. Less than 5% over here. No, they're not the same, okay? So, if you're a new versionist, you have to lie to the lost world out on the street. If you're a King James Bible believer, King James onlyism, you know, you can tell the truth. You see the problem? But then the other option, I said there were two options. Number one is you can say, you can lie to the guy and say all the versions say the same thing, which is a lie, and of course he can disprove you very easily. But the second option is to say, well, you see, all of the versions are just translations, and we don't really have any that are perfect, and uh, that none of them are really God's Word. They're all just man-made books, which is really what the new versionists believe in their minds. Okay? That's what they believe. Do you think a young Muslim is going to convert to, to Christianity if he's told that there is no perfect Bible? Absolutely ridiculous. You see, the Bible prophesies, and I'm going to get into this a little bit more later, but the Bible prophesies that there would come a great falling away. And you want to know why? Right there. There's no final authority anymore. We have contradicting versions, and you pick the one that you prefer. Absolutely ridiculous.